Morning everyone, so welcome to our second jigsaw lesson in your book, so you can write the date and today's waltz. And if you can cast your minds back to our previous lesson, I would like you to write down what was the message behind the poem from the last lesson. If you wanted to pause the video and re-read uh, re re the poem, you can do now. And get your answer down. Okay, so we're going to look at a short story today called Keep Flying Little Bird. It's written by Ben Lurwell and illustrates it by Chris Warnell or Wormell. So the kind of questions we're going to be asking and thinking about is as we read the story together, think about the little bird and what do we learn about her and what is life like for her? Keep flying, little bird. With a swoop and a lift and a glide and a drift, little bird came into land. She had a black head, short legs and long graceful wings. She was just 10 weeks old, but when she flew, she flew. Little bird was an Arctic tern. She had hatched on an island called Greenland near the North Pole, but she would soon be spreading her wings. For the, for the first time, she'd be flying to her other home. Her other home was in Antarctica, at the very bottom of the world. Every year, Little Bird's mother and father flew from the top of the world to the bottom, and every year they flew back again. Like Little Bird, her parents were small, but their silver-tipped wings were strong. The journey would be hard for such a young bird. It would be long, tiring and dangerous, but it was time. The three birds turned away from the mountains and faced the ocean, and with a swoop and a lift and a glide and a drift, their journey began. Her mother and father swept upwards. Little bird followed light as a seashell. They climbed into the silent sky and they flew. They flew south, soaring above the waves. Sometimes Little Bird rose so high that all she could hear was the wind, and sometimes she flew so low that she could catch a fish to eat. Sunrise followed sunrise. All was ocean, as far as the eye could see. But after a time, they found no fish to eat. For two days, then three, they went hungry. Little Bird flew more slowly. She grew so tired that she could barely lift her wings. On the fourth day, a shoal of red silver fish appeared a gleam in the blue. Her father arrowed with, into the waves. He came out with a herring in his beak. Her mother plunged into the sea and Little Bird followed. They found a fish and they fed. Now Little Bird flew on, much stronger. The days blew by, one cloudless afternoon, a, a month after leaving Greenland. Little Bird dipped her wings and sped low. When she flew back up high, she saw something new, something big, land in the distance. It was Africa. The little bird reached the shoreline. She flew in loops and dived for fish. For days, the three birds travelled south past the purple volcanoes and dazzling bays. They crossed the equator on hot winds. Every day was long and rich with light. One morning, just as the little bird had gathered a fish from the waves, a sea eagle flashed out of the sky. It rushed at her, snatching with its talons. Little bird turned swiftly in the air, but her fish fell. The eagle caught it, gobbling it down in one gulp. The three tiny birds flew on, fluttering in a panic, then finding quiet. Every day they glided through the endless blue, staying close to land, until one morning when, as quickly as Africa appeared in front of them, it disappeared behind them. Then it was ocean, and more ocean. The birds were weary, but they still flew. The waves swelled and the winds rushed. The seas were darker now and the air was wilder. Little birds soared on. Her great journey was nearly over. And on a blustery, sunny afternoon, at the bottom of the world, it happened. The three birds saw their southern home shining white in the distance. They sailed through the sky with 10,000 miles trailing out behind them, Shelves of ice filled the horizon. The sun shone. They tilted their wings towards the shoreline and for the first time Little Bird felt the great white breath of Antarctica. And with a swoop and a lift and a glide and a drift, she came in to land. Her journey was over. In a few months, when the freezing cold set in, she would take to the air again. But for now, under the golden polar sun, Little Bird rested. 
So have a think about what the message is as I uh, read it. What do you think the message might be in this story? Write it down and pause the video. So what do we learn about the little bird in this story? Did you learn anything? What did you think of the little bird character? Write down your answer, pause the video. Okay, so uh, how would you then describe little bird? Uh, again, pause the video and have a go. And last but not least, how do we know that the journey wasn't easy for little bird? Do you need to rewind the video and have a look at the text to back up your answer? I know it was easy because I know it wasn't easy because. So little bird's qualities. Do you think she had all of these qualities? Just one, just two, or does she have them all? So Little Bird had never made the journey to Antarctica before, so it was important that she stayed with trusted adults who knew the way. How can trusted adults help you through your journey in life? Who else do you trust to help you be successful? So the first part of your task is to maybe draw or write um, about someone who you trust and helps you in your journey through life. So having resilience, even though the journey was hard and Little Bird faced lots of challenges, she never gave up. When you don't give up, even when your things are hard, you are showing resilience. How and when have you showed resilience in your journey through life? Again, if you want to draw a picture or write about when you've uh, shown resilience, you can do. I would say for myself, uh, if we look back previous slide. If I was to say a trust in others, how can trusted adults help you on your journey through life? I would have said my dad or my rugby coach or maybe a teacher or a lecturer from school or university. I've trusted them to give me the best chance to be stronger and fitter at rugby, to make good life choices that my dad has helped me learn um, or has guided me in the right place to study and get the best grades I can. When it comes to resilience, I could possibly use some of the same examples. So I've used resilience during university when I find things really difficult. I've got my head down and read a little bit longer or worked a little bit harder on my dissertation, my project that I was working on. So that's when I showed resilience or perhaps if I was in the gym or playing rugby and my legs couldn't move me anymore. I just pushed on it that little bit more to try and finish the game or run an extra 100 meters. And last one, having a goal. Little Bird and her parents reached Africa where the weather was warm and the waves were full of fish. Despite this, they knew that their goal was to reach Antarctica. They didn't just settle for what was good enough. They kept going until they reached their goal. What goal can you keep in sight on your journey through life? So what goal can you set yourselves to help you in the future? Uh, a goal for me, for instance, was to become a teacher. So when I was in university, that's something I wanted to do later on and I had to get a certain grade to be able to go into teaching. So I've sort of pursued that as my goal. Okay, have a go at drawing a little bird in the middle of your page. Around the bird, write down the qualities that she used to help her on her journey and how they can help you. Here's an example. Resilience. I can show resilience by not giving up when things are tough or I find something difficult. I must be patient and keep going on Try different ways to achieve what I'm trying to achieve. So you could then write about your goal, how trusting others might um, has, might have helped you in the past. And uh, that's what we're going to be looking for today. So and that's a nice picture of a bird. And then your three um, key features, trusting others, resilience and having a goal. Look forward to seeing your answers when you upload them. Have a lovely day and I'll see you later. Bye.